I've been scouring the globe searching for the weirdest houses on Earth. And let me tell you, people live in some strange, strange places. From the man who chose to live in a dumpster for a very smart reason, to the invisible house you can book on Airbnb, and much, much more. Let's take a tour around some of the most unusual houses you never knew existed. Dumpster Dwelling The city of London is known for its rich history and traditional architecture, but one of its residents seems to have thrown traditional living, well, in the trash. At the beginning of 2023, 28-year-old British artist Harrison Marshall made headlines by moving in to a literal dumpster. Harrison made this bold statement in collaboration with London-based art organization Skip Gallery, which has installed almost 20 other dumpster-based art pieces around the world since 2016. This striking 2018 art piece titled Upgrade, for example, was another Skip Gallery collaboration with artist Richard Woods on a road in the Shoreditch district of East London. It was intended to reflect the rapid buying up and renovation of the city's older, typically poor areas by the wealthier modern day occupants. But unlike those previous dumpster sculptures, Harrison Marshall's habitable version doubles as a unique way for him to beat London's rising living costs. Packed into just 25 square feet of living space are amenities you'd find in a regular house, just slightly miniaturized. These include a mini fridge, an induction cooktop, and even a raised mezzanine-style double bed for maximum floor space. Including building supplies and interior furnishings, Harrison spent just under $5,000 building the structure inside a real dumpster as well as $600 to transport it to its new location. The land itself was donated to the young architect by an arts charity who also covered the dumpster home's minuscule electrical bill. While the average monthly rent in Harrison's neighborhood is over $2,000, this genius beater of the system is paying just $62 a month to a waste collection company to rent his home's dumpster foundation. Unfortunately, the bathroom is just a border potty positioned outside the tiny wooden home and Marshall has to shower at his office or local gym. But on the bright side, I actually think the dumpster house appears surprisingly cozy. Plus, they say that an Englishman's home is his castle. So the owner of this unusual castle shall hereby be dubbed the king of minimalism and resourcefulness. Mwah, jolly good show, old bean. Still checks. While there are many home seekers out there that do like to be beside the seaside, this next beachside abode might make you think twice. While the Outer Banks of North Carolina definitely look like the perfect spot to live a peaceful life by the sea, some of the abodes here are surprisingly weird. Creepy ghost towns of abandoned stilt houses like these have loomed over the Outer Banks' sandy shores for decades. As a result, the doomed dwellings are regularly claimed by the Atlantic Ocean. But how did they get there? It turns out many of these stilt houses were built back in the 20th century when the shoreline was well over 400 feet away. But climate change has since caused the Outer Banks to erode at unexpectedly high rates of up to 14 feet per year. Many homeowners have begged state officials to protect their properties through beach nourishment programs, but their hands are already full maintaining the nearby North Carolina Highway 12, where bulldozers are constantly replenishing the protective sand dune barriers as quickly as they're being eroded. This has led some homeowners to spend six figures shifting their entire properties away from the coast. This five-bedroom vacation rental, ironically named Wave Breaker, for instance, was on the verge of collapsing on Merlot Beach in Rodanth when the owner had it lifted 500 feet inland in 2014. Stilts and all. But even that is likely to be a short-term solution, as the sea continues its inland invasion. So for now, it seems like all these unusual stilt houses will ultimately succumb to what you might call a series of unfortunate events. While the stability of stilt houses is questionable, the troop of champions I've been recruiting are pure strength. With over 800 collectible characters and terrifically tactical gameplay, the free-to-play mobile game that's sponsored today's video is legendary. 
After downloading Raid via my link, use my promo code BEAMAZEDXRAID for new US players to get extra goodies. And with exclusive holiday themed events continuing up to January 10th, you can win a bounty of in-game and real life prizes from legendary champions to Amazon gift cards by following brave Sir Nicholas across the Red Spike Mountains on an epic Yuletide quest. Download Raid Shadow Legends, then venture over to RaidXmas.com and enter your player ID to start. You can also venture into the Cursed City, now boasting a hundred stages, including my favorite thing ever, dual boss battles. Click my link in the description or scan my QR code for insane bonuses, including two epic champions, Lightsworn and Juliana, after reaching level 15. You can even join my clan using the tag BMZD. So join me in Raid Shadow Legends and I'll see you on the battlefield. Origami House According to the American Community Survey, the average person will move house more than 11 times in their lifetime. But I think we can all agree that just one house move is enough to put you off for life. Until now. Most of us are familiar with the typical process of moving out. You pack your belongings into boxes, load up the moving van, and watch your old home disappear in the rearview mirror. But what if your home could somehow pack itself into a box and relocate right along with you? Let me introduce you to architecture company Tenfold Engineering. Founded in 2013, the company designs housing units that fold like origami into compact portable cuboids. After being transported to your desired location via truck, a button press activates an inbuilt lever system which expands the cuboid's volume by three times in under 10 minutes. My personal favorite has to be their treehouse model, which raises the living space off the ground by expanding upwards and outwards. Right now, the origami houses function as mobile vacation homes and need to be fixed with solar power and water treatment systems for longer stays in any given location. Priced at around $130,000 each, these origami homes could be the perfect solution for frequent travelers, or just those of us looking for a real-life transformer we can live inside. Artist Tower While the bare minimum you'd expect from a house is four walls and a roof, our next unusual home is more about bearing all to the elements. The Artist Tower on the Sea is a four-story residential space positioned 33 feet off the coast of Cologne Island in the Boca del Toro archipelago of Panama. Available to rent on Airbnb, the structure can only be accessed by rowing boat or swimming. Even crazier is that there are almost no walls enclosing either of the two bedrooms or bathrooms on the property. Exposed to the elements, guests are encouraged to enjoy unobstructed sea breezes in the area's temperate climate, which averages temperatures of 75 degrees Fahrenheit year-round, while admiring the numerous paintings and sculptures displayed all over the tower. All the artwork, as well as the tower itself, was designed and installed by Italian artist Filiberto Bonaventura, who owns the property and even lives in it himself between bookings. While there's no doubt my glistening beach body would put on an amazing show for all the neighboring islanders, this tower's open plan exterior might just be a little too open for my taste. School Bus Abode Nestled within the small forested town of Springbrook in Wisconsin sits a not-so-mobile house on wheels that would bewilder even the most well-versed motorhome aficionados. This standard 72-seater school bus balanced atop an old 28-foot-tall fuel tank serves as the world's most outlandish deer hunting stand. The bizarre structure was built by local hunting enthusiast Jesse Kaufman, who'd purchased the inactive bus from his neighbor for $400. As the owner of an excavation company, Kaufman was able to construct a temporary dirt ramp to the top of the fuel tank and use a bulldozer to push the vehicle into place. Deer stands tend to be much smaller, empty wooden structures which couldn't typically be considered houses per se, but Kaufman's especially roomy version actually boasts a fold-out couch, two more recliners, and a poker table among other furnishings. 
It even sports a working television and a heater by running electricity from his father's house nearby. Forget the hunting, though. I'm envisioning this unusual bus bungalow as my own private apocalyptic zombie shootout home. Upgraded into a triple-decker couch complex. Surrounded by windows for spotting approaching zombies. Jesse, if you've got a couple of spare buses, I'll bring the beer. Let's get this thing made. Twisted Apartment Hidden in a patch of woodlands outside the Indianapolis Art Center in central Indiana sits a curious little house that truly bends the rules of architectural engineering. Simply dubbed The Twisted House, this whimsical take on housing design was created in 2005 by American artist John McNaughton. The crooked doorway allows visitors to enter the building like an actual house, but the sculpture is too small to accommodate genuine residents. For a habitable version of this distorted domicile, check out this apartment complex located in the city of Ramat Gan in Israel. Named the Spiral House, this apartment block was designed in the 1980s by renowned Israeli architect Zvi Hecker. The bizarre building looks like it was constructed from the wreckage of a storm thanks to its chaotic use of plaster, pink glass, stone fragments, and corrugated metal. Strangely, the exterior was deliberately left unfinished, apparently to add to the building's, uh, poetic charm, I guess? <laughs> hmm. If not for its tidy and well-furnished interiors, I'd personally consider it quite the twist of fate to wind up living in this highly unusual residence. Arctic Hideaway even the most well-adjusted city dwellers, if such a thing exists, will tell you that the constant bustle of urban life can leave you yearning to reconnect with Mother Nature. But our next unusual home holds together both modern-day architecture and the natural world all at once. The Arctic Hideaway is a curious collection of cabins stationed on the northwestern edge of Sorvayaret Island in the frigid Flainvayer archipelago of northern Norway. The secluded facility houses five sleeping quarters, each costing $176 per night. But the site's crowning jewel is the Tower House, a raised communal space from which guests can enjoy magnificent views of the northern lights. The retreat is so remote that even the food has to be shipped in from the Norwegian mainlands as there are no stores on the island. But apparently there's also no noise, no stress, and no dangerous animals, which makes it a darn sight different to my local area. Upside Down House While Canadian suburbs contain millions of exceptionally ordinary houses, there's one located in the Clifton Hill District of Niagara Falls, Ontario that will literally turn your world upside down. The Upside Down House is a tourist attraction constructed in 2012 by Mark Siren and Adam Nilvovix. The two-story structure's exterior is strange enough, but it's the 1,200-square-foot interior that truly flips reality on its head. All the furniture and appliances are stuck to the ceiling, making for some truly disorienting photo opportunities. Just be careful not to get too dizzy in there, or you might even end up passing out on the floor. I mean, the ceiling. No wait, the floor. Uh, you get the point. Boulder Top Palace While castles being built on majestic hillsides is a tale as old as time, what about a royal palace plonked atop a precarious looking boulder? More commonly known as the Stone Palace, the Dar al Hajar is a grand residence constructed on a nail-bitingly narrow boulder in the Wadi Dahar Valley in Yemen. The grand five-story palace was designed as a summer retreat of notable Islamic monarch Imam Yaha Muhammad Hamid ed-Din, constructed atop a pre-existing structure that was built in the 1700s and remained in Imam Yaha's family until 1962 when the royals were overthrown in a military coup. Seeming to grow right out of the very rock it's perched upon, the national landmark is considered one of the greatest surviving examples of traditional Yemeni architecture and is even displayed on the 500 Rial Yemeni banknote. A complex labyrinth of corridors and staircases weave between fountained courtyards and appointment rooms, each lavishly decorated with intricate carvings and colorful stained glass windows. 
These days, this unusual rock palace is a public museum that offers visitors a look inside the magnificent fortress. But as impressive as it would be to explore the castle's insides, it's its exterior that really makes it monumental to behold. Living Askew While there are many beautiful homes in the seaside towns of England, there's one unique house that seems to be struggling to save face. Located in the Cliftonville district of Margate, England, this house possesses a front wall that has somehow slumped onto the ground, exposing the top floor's derelict interior. It seems impossible that the front door windows and bricks could have remained intact despite curving by 90 degrees. So what's really going on here? Well, until 2013, the house was actually a normal, albeit run-down property which had been vacant for 11 years. That was when British sculptor Alex Chinek gained permission from the local council to remodel the building as an art installation. Gathering $128,000 worth of materials and professional services, Chinek set to work designing and constructing the surreal spectacle, assembling the bricks around curved frames. After a year of giving visitors more to think about than fish and chips, the unusual sculpture was taken down in 2014 and restored as a livable version of the regular property once again. For me, the weirdest thing about the sculpture was its peculiar name. From the knees of my nose to the belly of my toes. Just trying to decipher why Chinette gave it such a peculiar name made me slump in my chair more than the house ever did. But what do you think is behind the puzzling name? Be sure to leave your theories in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to reply to the best ones. However, from the knees of my nose to the belly of my toes, try saying that ten times fast, isn't ye old England's only hidden home truth. At first glance, Five Thurlow Square in London's wealthy district of Kensington appears to be a regular, albeit old, London studio apartment complex. But when you turn the corner, you'll realize that things are not quite as they first appear. Huh. I always wondered why the British call them flats. Just kidding. In fact, Five Thurlow Square's outrageously skinny frame is somewhat of an optical illusion. Even though the building's right side is just six feet thick, it actually grows to 34 feet wide on the opposite end, forming a wedge shape. But why is its far end so narrow? The property was once a much larger estate that was demolished in 1867 to make way for a London underground subway line. A small triangular patch of land was all that was left by the tracks until local builder William Douglas discovered the site in 1885. In the late 19th century, Kensington was a world-renowned hub for artists and the triangular plot soon turned into housing for seven artist studios in the weirdly shaped red brick residence we see today. These days, the building contains seven lavish studio apartments, each valued at up to one and a half million dollars. While moving in does come attached with the risk of rattles from the sound of trains zipping past their south wall every few minutes, living right inside part of London's rich architectural history would arguably be worth the price. House in the Clouds On first glance, this might look like a pretty regular red board abode. But if you take a step back, you'll see that this humble house has been quite literally put on a pedestal, positioned 70 feet in the air. While it may look like it was built by an extreme doomsday prepper, the real reason behind this house in the clouds is a little more watertight. In 1923, residents of the seaside village of Thorpness in Suffolk, England decided that their local water tower was becoming a real eyesore. So they disguised it using sturdy weatherboards in the shape of a Tudor-style tower house with the red cottage-like top containing the 50,000-gallon water tank. Forty years later, a water supply scheme was introduced to the area and so the redundant tank was removed from the tower in 1977. Dubbed the House in the Clouds, today the building remains as a six-floor vacation rental boasting five bedrooms and four bathrooms. The old water tank summit has even been converted into a top floor rec room that provides breathtaking views of the Suffolk countryside. So while the sky might be the limit when it comes to water tower design, the story of the house in the clouds goes to show that there's no limit when it comes to creativity. Dr. Seuss Tower 
As kids, we all spent time imagining what our ultimate dream house would look like. But one young at heart architect made the house of his childhood storybooks a reality. American attorney and architect enthusiast Philip Widener is the designer and owner of Goose Creek Tower, an outlandish 17-story log cabin nestled in the dense Alaskan wilderness. Also known as the Dr. Seuss Tower, thanks to its similarity to the fantastical illustrations seen in Dr. Seuss's books, the project to build this storybook tower is quite the tale itself. It started out as a 40 by 40 foot log cabin with a basement, but Philip had the idea to use some leftover timber to build an extra floor. While that light bulb moment came over 20 years ago, since then, Philip's passion for the project only grew and he continued stacking the cabins until they reached the absurd height of 185 feet. In fact, the Seuss Tower only stops there because it's restricted by federal airspace, which begins at 200 feet. Since the upper floor currently lacks furniture and central heating, Widener mainly uses the top to admire the views and write poetry. While it's unclear whether he'll ever make it his permanent residence, all I really want to know is whether, while up in this tower, Philip has ever treated himself to a spot of green eggs and ham. Whole House Montrose Boulevard in Houston, Texas was a street like any other, until one day in 2005, residents noticed something just slightly unusual about one of their neighbor's homes. There, on the corner of Montrose and Willard Street, sat an extremely unusual residence with a gaping hole in the center of the front wall. While you'd be forgiven for thinking this is the residence of a mad scientist who'd accidentally opened a rift in the space-time continuum, or the guys from Jackass, or maybe even the Kool-Aid Man, in reality, the jarring structure is just a prank, bro. Originally the site of two bungalows set for demolition, sculptors Dan Havel and Dean Ruck turned their hand to making a spectacle before the homes were destroyed. Using scraps of timber from the walls of the old residences, they created this narrowing tunnel that led straight through the structure. After a few months of drumming up curiosity, the suburban wonder was finally replaced with a new contemporary art school called Art League Houston. While the destruction of the whole house certainly left a hole in the hearts of Montrose Boulevard residents, I'll bet they'll always look back fondly on that time it looked like their neighbor had been taken out by a giant bowling ball. <laughs> ah, memories. Wasteland Estate One of the most inhospitable environments known to man, the desert is one of the last places you'd expect to find your dream home. Until now. In 2019, this $3.2 million eight-bedroom mansion was built on a gated 12-acre plot of land in the tiny desert town of Tahoka, Texas. But despite being surrounded by miles of practically barren wasteland, the 10,000-square-foot residence is packed with unexpectedly lavish living spaces. The grand foyer alone features a 22-foot high ceiling, while a game room, home theater, and many other opulent spaces fill out the rest of this deluxe desert house. Even the dry, dusty land around the main residence has been spruced up into a pleasant outdoor oasis, including a tranquil one-and-a-half-acre pond with a waterfall feature and a five-stall barn for raising horses. Despite the Texan property's plentiful sunshine, lack of nosy neighbors, and flat open space, as of late 2023, it hasn't had much luck on the Tahoka property market. It even dropped in value by a million dollars after three months without a buyer. I don't know, though. You could really turn this place into a real-life Oasis Springs if you really had the cash, though you might need to learn Simlish, too. Invisible House if a multi-million dollar gated estate in the desert wasn't unusual enough to tempt you, how about a 230-foot fallen skyscraper that's basically invisible? The Invisible House is an enormous modern mansion in the shape of a horizontal 22-story skyscraper set on 90 acres of scorched desert beside Joshua Tree National Park in California. Built in 2019, the three-bedroom property almost vanishes into its surroundings thanks to its entirely reflective exterior. The Invisible House boasts 5,500 square feet of luxurious living space as well as its very own private 4,000-foot mountain peak and a 100-foot-long heated pool because that's what a pool in the desert needs, more heat. The extravagant estate is listed for $18 million as of 2023, but is also available as a vacation rental on Airbnb for a scorching $2,500 a night. 
What makes this strangely placed mansion even more intriguing is that numerous famous actors and musicians have been known to gather there, including Demi Lovato, The Weeknd, and Ariana Grande. Of all the luxurious vacation rentals to choose from, why pick one in such a harsh and inaccessible environment? Conspiracy theorists might suggest the near-invisible property functions as some kind of secret Illuminati meeting place, but in reality, it's probably just secluded enough to help them avoid paparazzi. Or maybe these pop stars go out there to quench their hidden lizard desires and warm their cold blood in the sun. Now that would explain everything. Lighthouse Living while we've already explored some of the most unique houses the world has to offer, many who have inhabited them could still lead relatively normal lives, unlike those in our next abnormal abode. Prior to the power of automation and GPS, the safety of those at sea largely depended on the coveted lighthouse keeper. Thanks to their usually remote locations, lighthouse keepers would often either live in the lighthouse itself or in other residences close to their lighthouse, sometimes with their families, passing the role onto their children in their old age. In this same vein, the 130-foot-tall Wester Heverson Lighthouse sits between not one, but two cottages on a raised portion of the low-lying marshy Eiderstedt Peninsula in Schleswig-Holstein, Germany. The lighthouse has been open to visitors since 2001, while one of the keeper's houses has been converted to a local registry office. While it's unclear if anyone still lives in either of the cottages, if they do, I certainly don't envy their lonely, flood-prone lodging. Even with two cottages to move between, I can't help feeling like things would feel a little claustrophobic when flood season rolls around. Crane Hotel Towering over the abandoned NDSM shipyard of northern Amsterdam stands a 70-year-old steel harbor crane that houses a surprising secret. Before the surrounding shipyard went bankrupt and closed in 1984, the old industrial crane was used to build and unload ships on the adjacent river. But in 2011, after rusting away for over three decades, innovative real estate developer Edwin Rudy decided to renovate the monumental machine into something you'd never expect to see in a rundown shipyard. For around $3.3 million, Edwin turned this decrepit crane into the Feralda Crane Hotel. And you won't believe what it looks like inside. A far cry from its days lugging ship cargo around, the former control cabins were converted into three luxurious duplex suites, each complete with a uniquely themed interior. Guests can even ride the elevator up to the crane's 165-foot high top deck to get to a whirlpool hot tub with spectacular views of the wider city. A stay will set you back a hefty $1,100 a night, but some might consider that a small price to pay for the memories of living inside such an unusual shelter for a while. I wish I could build a house inside an abandoned shipyard crane. Looks like it'd be the perfect place to hide from my crazy ex-wife. Concept Cribs while androids dream of electric sheep, modern architects dream of the most outlandish structures imaginable. And oh boy, are they unusual. The simply named House Inside a Rock Home is a prime example. This concept art was designed in 2019 by Indian architectural photographer Amy Kendall-Goncar. The contemporary concrete slabs jammed right into a massive monolithic boulder take inspiration from the Hegra World Heritage Site of Hejaz, Saudi Arabia. Featuring a wide, open-air living space and a swimming pool on the multi-level terrace, this rocky residence would easily be one of the world's most unique and oppressive abodes if it ever comes to be. Adopting a completely different style is the glass treehouse concept designed in 2013 by Kazakh architect Ibek Almasov. The concept features a glass cylinder wrapped around a full-grown fir tree. A wide spiraling staircase connects four ring-shaped floors, each providing 360-degree views of the surrounding forest. Since some glass and solar manufacturing companies have supposedly expressed interest in the concept, Almasov expected a real model to be built by 2017. But sadly, the plan appears to have crashed. Perhaps the investors were unhappy with the idea of giving up most of a property's floor space square footage to a potentially insect-infested tree. Yeah, I've certainly had worse roommates. Don't forget to join my clan in Raid Shadow Legends using the link in the description or by scanning my QR code. Which of these highly unusual houses do you fancy shacking up in the most? And what would your dream home look like? 
Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.